Hello, if you're new here, my name is Damon and I travel slash live part-time out of my converted 2012 Chevy Equinox. The goal of this video is to show you my build, um, all the essentials that I have, the things that I did to it, and basically what I need to survive comfortably on the road. And also give you an idea of things that you'll need if you're looking or thinking about making or building your own. Things that we're gonna cover in this video is my sleeping setup, my safety setup, my kitchen setup, and like my essentials slash fun. Like where do I store my clothes? Where do I store stuff like my skateboard right here? or hiking or tents and all that type of stuff. So that's what we're gonna go over in this video and I hope you enjoy, let's get into it. So obviously the first thing anyone sees when they look at my vehicle or go into my vehicle is the fact that there's no back seats and instead I have this twin bed here. So what I wanna do is kinda of show you guys what I did to build the twin bed and show you what it's like and how much room there actually is inside. If you look closely, you'll see that one thing I did differently in my build that other SUV builders will do is I fully removed my seats. So a lot of people will just fold their seats down here and then put their bed on top of it and then put their storage right in there. But I fully removed mine because mine didn't sit flat. So the way that this bed is fully flat here, my seats came up at an angle like this. They never went fully flat. So my options were basically sleep on an angle every day or take the seats out fully. And I decided to take the seats out fully because it gave me way more space for storage underneath of the bed. As for the bed itself, I didn't actually use a mattress. Instead, I grabbed these foam sheets and I cut them up into two pieces. They're about two inches each. So I cut one long one and folded it in half so that I have about four inches of pad right here. And then I'll just cover it with a sheet and then my blankets, pillow, etc. For a lot of people when they first see this build or thinking about doing their own, a big question is, is this comfortable? Because there's not a lot of room back there. So when you're sleeping at night, is it comfortable or would you rather have a completely different bed and not be sleeping in a car? So I'm gonna show you just how well I fit inside of this bed and how I get into bed. Now you'd usually assume that you jump through the trunk, which I've done a couple times, but I'll typically just climb through from my driver's seat. It's not a hard climb to be honest, but this is me fully laid out. My head like is just up against these seats here, but if I lay with my head that way, which I usually do, one little bend of the knees helps me fit perfectly. And at night, you usually sleep with your legs a little bit bent. So this fits me amazing. For reference, I'm about six foot one. And then to wrap up the bed segment, the last thing that I have in my bed is just my pillows and blanket because, well, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so for my kitchen setup, I usually keep all of my stuff on my right side passenger door. So everything just fits comfortably underneath the bed on the right side. Or no, the left side. <laughs> I don't know why I decided to use this old cracker box as kind of my pantry, but anything that doesn't need to be refrigerated or frozen or anything like that, I'll just put in this box. It's a good size, it fits comfortably underneath there. So anything that I usually have goes in here. As for the stuff that does need to be refrigerated, that ends up going in this cooler bag right here. Now, since I don't have a big power bank or anything to charge a kind of portable fridge, I just keep everything in here. At night, it's usually cold. Since this is in the dark underneath and low, it usually stays pretty cold underneath there. Cold enough to keep anything that you'd put in the refrigerator inside of this bag in safe and sound, at least for up to four days. I don't usually do anything that needs to be frozen. I'll stay away from frozen foods and just use um, things that fit inside of here. It's not big, it usually has to scrunch to fit, but for my needs, I mean, if you can go to the grocery store once a week and refill, you're good to go. For my kitchen setup, I have a steak knife, a spatula that's RGB, because honestly it was the cheapest one and I just found it kind of fun. And then the king of the kitchen right here. So this is my fire maple kitchen set. So basically what it is, is it's a mixture of pots, pans, skillets, and a kettle all inside of one. So on top of it, I put my other stuff like my can opener, my fork, spoon, and knife. I don't have any other utensils for guests, so sorry if you want to come along, but I'll show you everything that fits into this little bag. So when you take the unit out of the bag, this is what it looks like. You can lift up here, and then you have your skillet, which has a handle that just collapses from underneath. And then right here is actually a pot with another collapsible handle and a lid. And then underneath this lid is a second pot, a smaller one, the collapsible lid. And then inside is a portable kettle and some bowls. 
and this kind of weird spoon that I don't really know what it's for. But everything fits compactly into there and easily fits right into this place right here. There's way more space for any other kitchen supplies if I needed it. But to be honest, I don't really need anything else besides my one last thing, which is my portable stove. Okay, and so for the last part of my kitchen setup, we have to go back into the trunk. And if you look just right here, you'll see I have little cubbies underneath of the bedding. So if I pull out this one right here, this is actually my portable stove. Oh, I broke it. One moment. This is my portable stove, so it just opens up right here. You put the butane gas inside, and then you obviously start it, the fire will light, and you can put your pots, pans, skillets, and whatever you need on top of it to cook your meal. Now, something most people ask me a lot is, how do I stay safe when I'm sleeping in the van? If I'm in somewhere public like this, anyone could just walk up, try and open the van, try and rob me, etc. So, obviously I can't prevent someone from doing that. If they want to do that, they'll do it. But this is my attempt at staying safe in the way that I do it, which has worked well for me for the probably two months total that I've spent living in this van. So one of my go-to tricks inside of the van is to take my seatbelt, wrap it around the arm right here, and then clip it in. I'll do that to the two front seats. That way, they're not openable from the outside. Now, obviously there's nothing I can do at the back seats because I don't have um, back seats or seat belts or anything, but I just kind of hope that that one's okay. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really have any safety precaution for these back doors. But I do have window covers, which helps prevent people from being able to just look in and blatantly see me asleep in the middle of the night. So I'll show you what those look like. I have two places to store them. One is in this other one right here. This is the big window cover at the front. And then I have the rest of them stored underneath the bedding right there. I'll just show you what one of the window covers look like for the doors and what one, the one big one at the front window looks like. So for the big front window cover, it's just made out of reflectant. I made it and cut it myself just to fit the exact shape of all the windows. And the reflectant works great because it'll reflect the sun in the summer so that all your cool air can stay inside, which is super helpful because I've had a lot of hot, hot nights in this car and this just helps reflect the sun to keep it a little bit cooler than it would have been. This also doubles as an insulator. So in the winter time, when all of your body heat is warming up this vehicle or your AC or your heater is warming up the vehicle, this actually helps keep that heat inside because windows easily let cool air in. Or not air, but they let it, the cold come into the car. So this works really well at keeping that out. So for putting this up, you just unravel this whole thing and push it up against your window. As you can see, it fits perfectly, blocks out the entire front windshield and no one can see in. The nice thing that I also did to help my build stay in place, so I have four Velcro strips, one here, 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 and over there just across the top to help keep this in check. And then if the middle part ever starts sagging, I'll just grab this hat at the very front of my car and push it in up against it and it usually keeps it perfectly in place. I've never had any problems with it. So if you're gonna do that, that's the way. As for the side door panels, they're much easier than the front windshield. All you have to do is grab them, push them up against your window, and then as long as when you cut them, you cut them a little bit bigger so that they can kind of fit right in there. Then they'll just perfectly seal into that window. And now nobody can see through there and nobody can see through your front windshield. I know some people want to have more secure safety. Maybe they'll add locks or hinges on every bit of their doors. Or maybe some people don't even worry about that. I mean, I've seen people who just put a towel or cloth right here so that they don't have to worry about front window covers. Now for me, I prefer the window covers because it kind of turns your car into like a dark box so you can turn a flashlight on, it won't affect anybody outside, or if there's any outside light, it doesn't affect you inside. So if you want to do the window covers, they're super easy. I mean this, I think this reflectant costed me maybe $10 and I just cut it up myself to form the windows. So if you're looking to do this yourself, I highly recommend the reflectant for all your windows. And last but not least, I'm gonna show you guys where I store like my lifestyle stuff. So my clothes, uh, my activities, my hiking stuff, my camping stuff, where do I store all that? And the answer is underneath this side and within this cupboard right here. So on the right side of the vehicle, down here, I'll put my hiking bag, my clothes, this is my hiking bag, this is my clothes bag. I have a tent stored right under there. I have a bunch of shoes 
I have hiking shoes, basketball shoes, skating shoes, and water shoes. And as you can see here, I have my cases of water. They actually used to go up here. So I would put my cases of water at the foot of the passenger seat, but I bought a paddle board. So when I use that, it actually sits perfectly underneath here and just sitting up into the passenger seat. So that fits great there. And I moved my water supply just underneath here. If I ever need water, I'll grab it before I go to sleep or I'll take a few out and just put it inside of the van. Now, you may have seen the little cupboards that are inside of the van. This is kind of where I put my random stuff. Um, so these cupboards right here, this is more so like my toiletry one. So I have my travel bag for all my toothpaste and all that stuff. Towel, this is more of a beach towel. I don't use it as like a shower towel. But down here we have gloves, hat, bug spray, uh, towels. In the summer when it gets hot, I use this portable fan. It's just battery powered and it runs for about six hours at night. Uh, and then the batteries die, which kind of sucks because I learned that the hard way. One night I was sweating a whole bunch and I thought that fan was going to keep going, but I woke up at about 2 a.m. just sweating. So if you're going to get a portable fan, try and find one that lasts longer than six hours. As for Cubby 2, this one's a little bit more hectic, a little bit less organized. I have my mix of books back here, a Lego set that my friend actually bought me, um, more bug spray, some tissues, this is my trash bin right here, so it's easily accessible from the front seat. I'll just reach my hand back, throw out whatever I need to throw out, sunflower seed, and then just an extra water bottle if I ever need it, my actual water bottle, and some portable lighting right here. I have about six of these throughout the vehicle. Some are in the cabinets, some are underneath, down there under the bed, and then some of them are just in my hand like this. I used to have one up here, as you can see from the old remains right there but gravity kind of took its course and took that one from me. So this portable hand one is kind of my favorite one at the moment. And then this is my camera bag, by the way. If you're thinking about building a van like this, my recommendation is just to do it because one, it's your car. So you don't really have to invest a bunch of money. Most people have cars. Two, it can just be a weekender. Like I don't always full-time live in this. Sometimes if I just want to go on a weekend trip, there's somewhere I want to see, maybe I just want to go camping for a little bit. This is the perfect rig just for weekend getaways. So. If you want something like that, I highly recommend this. Highly recommend getting your SUV or your car even, or your truck, and just building it out into a little camper, especially if you're younger, especially if you have a little bit of time in your hands on the weekends. Just go get away, have fun, and yeah, I'll show you the vehicle from the outside. That's the total complete build. Nothing crazy, again, pretty small. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video helped you in some sort of way or you just found it interesting. Uh, follow along. I make videos every Thursday. I'm going to be doing something, I think, with a lake next Thursday. Maybe paddleboard camping, if weather permitting. No promises, though. I will see you guys next week.